Welcome to our online presentation today, Wildlife Safaris in India with Royal Expeditions. And here to take us on this wonderful online journey through a part of India that uh, many of you may not have heard about in great detail is Jane Barron. Welcome, Jane. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Lee. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, um, I am the owner of Emerging Destinations based in Atlanta, and I represent several companies. Um, in addition to Royal Expeditions, who I worked with for four years, I represent uh, Patagonia Cruises uh, by Cruceris Australis. Um, used to be with another company in East Africa, but have just moved to Premier Safaris for Uganda and Rwanda, and uh, then also Marasa Africa, where we own several lodges in Uganda and Kenya. Believe it or not, we just bought the Ark in Kenya and are, and have, are just completing renovations on that. And uh, as of April, I'm also going to be working with a wonderful, very boutique company out of uh, Namibia called Profile Africa. So those of you who want to do private flying safaris with a guide, it's a perfect way to go. And what I'm going to do is run through with you guys um, wildlife safaris in India. Um, why do you want to go? What, what, it, what is there to see to give you a taste? Um, in my 22 years in the business, I will tell you that India, I think, is one of the hardest destinations to truly become an expert. And um, yes, we can do the Golden Triangle and all of those, you know, which there are certain things that everybody does, but it is such an incredibly diverse uh, continent. Remember, it's the size of Europe, um, huge amount of different ecosystems, everything from, you know, mangrove forests to the Himalayas, um, lots and lots of different cultures. Um, thousands and thousands of heritage sites. Um, we've got you know, forts, spiritual sites, you've got temples, incredible palaces. Uh, and then India also has 80 national parks, including 23 tiger reserves and then more than 440 wildlife sanctuaries. Uh, we're home to more than 350 different mammals and about 1,200 species of birds, 1,600 reptiles, and, and amphibians, and then, um, if, if you want to know this, 57,000 um, species of insects. So it's a tremendous amount to learn, um, and Royal Expeditions really wants to share this with you. Um, I have this picture of Michael Palin, um, who did the BBC Himalayas, best known for Monty Python, um, but we have worked with him on a couple of trips that he's done, so you can go by the um, Himalayas CD um, program and we, we planned all of his and did all of his India program for that. And you know why travel with Royal Expeditions? Um, the main thing really is going to be our access and our connections. Um, we were founded in 1993 by Rani Chandras Kumari. That's a mouthful. Uh, the Princess of Jodhpur and a member of Parliament um, and a guy Vishal. Singh, who is, uh, has been in tourism for years, um, really to give an insider's view of travel to India. What's really important to us is we are not mass market. If you want mass market India, please, please don't call us. What we want is to add those special little touches that not everyone can do, introductions to people, um, meeting top wildlife scientists. Um, and really being incredibly creative. And that's what we specialize in, uh, is really being creative. Um, I do have this picture of the Umaid Bawan Palace that is in everybody's brochure to India. The main reason I have this in here is um, Chandra, this, um, our, our chairwoman, this was her childhood home. So when you do have something going on in Jodhpur, especially you know, her brother is the Maharaja, her father was the Maharaja. We can do very special things there in Rajasthan also, um, especially this area, just so you know. We specialize in luxury, tailor-made, and scheduled holidays. We don't have that many scheduled departures, but we do have a few that we run every year. And uh, But every single trip we, we do, other than those schedules, can be modified to suit your client's needs. Everything from you know horseback riding um, in uh, Rajasthan to the Pushkar Fair, uh, private flying safaris. Uh, if you want you know to add yoga classes in, uh, cooking lessons, any of that we we will do. And then of course introductions to people. This is just a screenshot that I took of our website 
just to sort of give you an idea of some of the types of wildlife trips that we offer. Um, I had the ultimate in compliment from a um, friend of mine who specializes in African safaris who just recently traveled with us. And those of you know, who sell Africa, you've got the perfect clients to go see the wildlife of India. And he said, Jane, you guys are the wilderness safaris of, of India uh, because of your incredible knowledge and what we do there. Um, and just showing you, um, we do quite a few tours to see um, various tigers. We do every year offer a tiger habitat tour where, where we have um, some of the top researchers in India uh, in tigers taking uh, our, our clients around. And this is for those who really want to learn, learn in depth what the researchers do on the ground. Very, very interesting tour. And then we are also very involved with um, panda calling with the uh, Wild, World Wildlife Fund, uh, their, their India partnership program, the Snow Leopard Conservation um, Conservancy India Trust. And then Vishal, our managing director, is the India director for Travel Operators for Tigers, which is a program where they're using the gorilla model of tourism to try to make sure that the local people are benefiting from tourism and, and, and not those who just live by the main gate where the lodges are, those who live 50 miles away in, in some place where the tigers may be coming and raiding their crops. And uh, it's a really a really nice organization if you're not familiar with it. And uh, for, I'm not going to tell you all a whole lot about why India. Um, just know that it's incredibly vast. I'm going to show you a map here. Incredibly vast, a huge area. Um, what You've got culture, you've got incredible beaches. We can also do Sri Lanka, just so you know. We can do Kashmir, those areas. Um, and, but what I'm going to do is really show you all why the, why the wildlife in, um, in central India. And you know why our wildlife? Um, it's incredibly good. You have to manage your expectations. Um, when you're going, many people are, and I was one of them, to be honest, are afraid to go to India. They think, oh, I'm going to hate it. I'm not going to like it. Um, it's too crowded, too overpopulated. And in certain areas, that is true. Um, the wonderful thing is, is 80% of the people in India still live a rural lifestyle. So um, once you get out of the big cities, uh, you see a totally different India and, um, and they're going to have a better feel for the country. I will say when I was in Mumbai at the airport, or Bombay as all the locals called it while I was there, um, you know, talking to some businessmen who were leaving, they were saying, oh, no, I don't think I'd come back. My wife would hate it. And, and I was thinking, have we been in the same country? And that's because they've been concentrated in the cities the whole time, which are quite spectacular. Um, but when you're, But they were seeing the much harsher side. What we like to do is take you away from the cities, and then slowly um, introduce you to the, the harder sides of India where, when you're a little more used to it. And for our wildlife, um, you know, I've already mentioned we've got 23 tiger reserves. Did you know that India has the big seven? And what I'm going to do is run through what these big seven are for you. And we've got leopards found throughout the entire, throughout the entire country. Um, leopards are one of the best surviving of the big cats because they are so secretive you don't and um, and they can live in many many different environments and because they're secretive people don't know they're there um, Asian elephants uh, these are in the foothills of the Himalaya southern India eastern India and you and then you you see the wild ones and then you also see the working um, Asian elephants and then we have rhinos these are found in an area called Kazaranga National Park and Manas National Park, and they're going to be in eastern India. Um, Kazaranga is an incredible park, normally not going to be your client's first time visit to India. Um, you're, you're talking some major distances from the major, from the major centers here, but it is um, National Geographic about two years ago, ago did an incredible article on India's grassland park, and that would be Kazaranga, and well, well worth visiting. And then we also have the Asiatic lion, which is going to be in western India at Gur National Park. These are the lions that used to roam all throughout Europe and Asia. And uh, these are the last remaining 
that are um, that are found. And frankly, they can be a little mangy looking because their um, habitat has been so they, they, there just aren't enough of them um, left. And so, and then we have the snow leopard, um, which is you add to the big five to make the big seven. Uh, these are found in India and Ladakh. There is no data on them right now. There are about 400 left in, over very over several countries. Um, they live in the in the Himalayas. When you go to see them, you you traditionally go to the Himalayas in the winter, because in the winter they will move further down the slopes. And uh, we do have some nice departures with some of the top with a top scientist on snow leopards, where you're going to be in um, huts, in sleeping bags seeing the snow leopard. And we have about an 85% success rate to see them. This is not for everybody. This is for your true, true adventure client. But they're going to have an incredible time and also learn about the culture of Ladakh and, and the, the research and all that's going on here. And we were one of the pioneers and um, the first company bringing people to this area of India to, to see the snow leopard. And then we have the tiger. Um, Less than uh, 1,300 of them left. They disappeared from a huge amount of their range. The good news about the tigers in India is the national parks that have the highest tourism also have the highest tiger populations. And so what that's telling us is that tourism is really making a huge difference and that the local people then have a vested interest in, in tiger tourism by keeping them there. Um, this is a mother and cubs. Um, the tigers tend to live and hunt alone. Um, they're social with each other, but it's unusual to see it other than when they, but it's the mothers, um, the mothers and the, before their cubs leave. They are absolutely magnificent, the largest of all the cats. And what I love about them is they, um, they love the water, so not at all unusual to see them in water. The best time to see the tigers is going to be between February and May before the rains start. Um, one thing that I want you to be aware of is when you've got clients that are going to see the tigers, um, a lot of times they'll go, oh, I'm going in September, or I'm going in October. A lot of the national parks are not even open until October um, because of the rains. And at that point, the grass is really high. Uh, they don't, the park rangers don't necessarily know when, what the patterns of the tigers are within the park. So if you do go those times of year, we'll tell you the best parks to go to, but also make sure you give yourself enough time. You're going to, in general, have better tiger viewing February through May. Not to say you're not going to have it there other times, but it, it is going to be better viewing. Um, they live primarily, but tigers in the wild can live up to about 20 years. Um, they prey primarily on wild boar and uh, medium to large size deer, um, such as chital, sambar. I'll show you some of these black buck. Um, then sometimes they will also, you know, in eastern, play, uh, prey on rhino calves, leopards, sloth bears, and monkeys, depending on how hungry they are. Uh, but absolutely magnificent, magnificent cats. Some of the other wildlife that we have in India, because um, it tends to be very tiger-centric, what I want you to do is when you go, hope to see tigers, and then, but really also try to focus on other wildlife there. You're going to have a better experience and try to push that through to your clients, too. Sambar deer is, is a deer that you're going to see throughout central India. The jackal, actually that's the photo that I took. Um, of a of jackal, Barasinga, and that's a more of a water buck. You're going to see that you're going to mostly see it in water. My favorite of the wild dogs is the Dole, is the Indian wild dog. They're just pretty. Um, they 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 look more like foxes, and um, I had incredible viewings of these um, in Kana National Park, and uh, quite magnificent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to central India and just sort of show you some of the best wildlife safaris of central India. Um, one comment I do want to make is a lot of people are also, uh, I'm not going to cover Ransombor National Park, which if you can see the, uh, my, my arrow is right here. 
Uh, that's a wonderful add-on if people only um, are going to do Rajasthan. Most of the time, if they really are going to be tiger-centric, I'm going to want to take you to, to more of central India in this area. And the best wildlife safaris. And I'm going to show you the parks of Madhya Pradesh. And our focus is going to be on Pana, Bangavar, and Kana National Park. Uh, you can get here, you can fly from Delhi, you can fly from um, Bhopal. My, sometimes my Hindi is not very good, just so you know. Um, but you can fly from here. You can also then drive between the parks. They're pretty brutal drives, uh, but depending on the budget that your client has, you know, we, we can drive or we can fly. And some just to show you what you have in this area. And this is what I think a lot of people don't expect in India. They expect crowds. They expect this. They don't expect to go through miles of evergreen forests, the semi-evergreen forests that we have, deciduous forests. And they, by the way, they call all of the forests, they're all jungle. And then tropical dry forests that we have. And this is in uh, Pana, I believe. And then they, in the national parks, when they gazetted the parks, they did relocate a lot of settlements that were there. And in some of the parks, the settlements were abandoned years ago. And then they have got some beautiful rivers. This is the Ken River. And I've just noticed I have a um, something on my screen. And then in central India, India, we have the tigers. And what I'm going to do is tell you how to view tigers how you view them in the national parks here. Um, you can view them by elephants. And what you do here when you get, there are a couple of ways you can do it depending on the park. You can, um, with about three months notice and for a quite a high fee, you can rent an elephant for a whole day. You don't want to be on an elephant all day. They're really can be quite uncomfortable, but know that that's an option. But what most of the time is, is at the parks, there is an area where the um, elephants will will be. And what we do is you know, they'll, the vehicles will queue up. Everyone will wait in line. You get your turn to get on top of the elephant. And the, at that point, they've already found where the tigers are. And then you will walk through the brush and through the forest to where the tigers are. And you get about 10, 15 minutes that way to see them. And then also by vehicle. One of the things to manage your expectations is, is the park services at this point have not done a really ter um, terrific job of educating the park rangers on ways to make it so it doesn't seem so crowded when you see that. So sometimes when you do see the tigers, you might have a lot of people around. If you do what I do, you'll say, look, I don't care to see tigers. Let's go to a part of the park that's not crowded. That's going to be your best chance to see them without a lot of vehicles around. OK, and then I'm just going to show you the park. So I'm going to show you Pana, Bangavar, and Kana. And when you, just so you know, when you go to Kana, uh, I'm sorry, to Pana, um, one of India's top um, temples and tourist attractions is nearby and is a quick drive from there, and that is uh, Kanjaharo, which is an incredible temple, well worth staying. There's a nice Taj hotel in this area, but if you to add the culture and the wildlife, it's a perfect addition to do that. And then we get to um, Pana Tiger Reserve, which um, has a lot of water in it going through, known to flood. So that's one reason a lot of this hasn't been, been um, covered. We only have um, developed the area. We do have a, uh, only have a few tigers here, very difficult to see. Um, well, like when I was there, I did not see a tiger. But what I did is we saw the footprints. It was all, it was all around us that day. But it is incredible for birds and for other, other wildlife. You do go around in these small jeeps, the gypsies they call them. And again, you can have, um, you can have two people up, up to five. I, I, I tend to like a small. But what they do have here, and um, there were seven sloth bear sightings the day I was here. 
in Pana um, to see the sloth bears. Most people don't expect to see this in India. You've got the gharial, the fish-eating crocodile, and easy to see in, in the Ken River here. Incredible, incredible bird life. I mean, I cannot um, describe how, how beautiful the birds are here. And that's a bee eater, by the way. The langur, um, we've got the primates. They look so human to me. And then where to stay. Just really quick, um, this is the and beyond Taj property. Um, Pashangar, beautiful, beautiful luxury property. The staff will take wonderful care of you um, in a beautiful, beautiful setting. And this was fun here when I was here because that was the tiger was nearby, and so we were having to be careful outside, and everybody was taking a look to see where the where the male tiger was um, when I was here. And then another um, more of a four star property is going to be Ken River Lodge, uh, built up on stilts because uh, is, it is on the river in an area that floods. And um, very nice accommodations, incredible wildlife here at the river, and then the, the naturalists here are spectacular. Um, and then I'm going to move you to Bangdavar National Park. Bandagar, I always do that wrong. Bangdavar National Park. And I absolutely love this park uh, because you also have ruins in here. Um, you've got a, a wonderful fort. And this is a, a map to see the size of the park. It's really, really quite large. And what I think is sad, only about 5% of the tourists that go to Bengagar actually go up to the fort. Um, and they are really, really missing out. It's up on top of the mountain here. And uh, with ruins, I had a group up here that they saw four tigers up here, and they were the only people up there. Um, but it's a wonderful place to go up to the top, see the ruins. They actually have a, there is a, a, a gentleman there, um, a priest and with a temple who works at the temple, and you can go in there. But to go up there and really have a picnic and watch the birds soaring by, I had a peregrine falcon go by, incredible. Um, and then you'll see people lined up here to get on elephant's back to go see the tigers. And then viewing tigers, see if you can see there is a tiger right there. Their camouflage is excellent. It really is. This is a view of a um, vulture that Vishal took when he was up at the top of the fort with me um, while we were having our, we actually were having a breakfast up there. Uh, incredibly gorgeous area with the views. And then there, we've got a lot of small wildlife, incredible butterflies. Peacocks, wild peacocks roaming all over the place. And then more tigers. And this is the grasslands in Bangdavar. And most people stay in one section of the park. Um, well worth it to get out into the other areas and enjoy the wildlife. And going by elephant. We can, in certain areas, we, as I mentioned, we can do permits where you can, um, a photographer permit, uh, where you can be out longer uh, for those clients and, and um, who have the money to pay for the permit, just so you know. Uh, Cheetal, um, is there any doubt this is the, uh, this is Bambi, the, the, the um, Bambi deer? And these are one of the favorite foods of the tigers and the leopards. The rhesus macaque. And then where to stay here? Lots of accommodations here. You've got a lot near the gate and others near the various gates and others that are further away. Um, and beyond Taj property. This is actually my room. <laughs> and King's Lodge. This is also my room um, when I stayed at King's Lodge. Uh, it's, gonna, it's a lovely five-star property, not nearly going to be the cost that you're going to have at, a, at the Taj property. And wonderful, wonderful um, naturalists working here also. And tree hotel. This is a tree house. What I did not realize um, until I was there is how unbelievably expensive wood is in India. And um, to, to the local Indians, this place is absolutely amazing, all built of wood, um, because they just they don't have as much 
Um, but this is a wonderful place. Uh, they've got a blind there right next to the park, uh, adjacent to it, and they often have tigers come on property and have a blind that you can go to and uh, watch the wildlife. And then the Samode Safari Lodge um, is a relatively new place that's opened. Um, five star, incredibly good. This is most, uh, most a lot of the Indians that I know, one of their favorite places to stay. And then just to show you a little bit of Kana National Park. Known as the Ngoro Goro Crater of um, India, because of the, the wild wildlife and it sort of rings in. Some of the original cattle, the gar, the bison. The sambar. Again, favorite food of a lot of animals. Nigali. And I think this is what most people don't expect, this kind of wildlife in India. But you know, the, the, the big cats have to be eating something. Wild pig, something you never want to run into on foot. Chosinga, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then many more. You know, you, you've got bats. You've got little, um, they call them squirrels. They look more like the chipmunks I've got running in my front yard now. And squirrels and bats. And then where to stay here? Banjartola, again, this is a Taj property, Taj and beyond property. This was actually taken from my room while I was here. And what, what, what I loved is I was staying here um, in the afternoon. There were local women to the side doing their laundry. Shergar Camp, this is a nice tented option that you have. Kana Jungle Lodge, a three, four star option. And great. And so those were that that was actually very quickly just the parks um, and, and what there is to do. And now I just sort of just want to show you all a couple of our of our trips and then I'm going to show you something else. Um, just take you to somebody's Facebook page who's traveling with me right now. I mentioned that we do do um, trips to see the snow leopards. We do work with Dr. Uh, Ragu. Thunderwatt, um, he is the best known of the snow leopard researchers, and he is also um, one of the best, he was one of the original tiger researchers, early tiger researchers in India. He does do a trip with us every year. He alone, he is such a personality. People love, love traveling with him, know that that's an option. And let's hang on real quick. And then I mentioned travel operators for tigers. What I do want you to look at, and every property I showed you is a member of travel operators for tigers, please take a look and see if they are, if who you're working with is a member of TOF. This is, just means that they're giving an additional support to the wildlife in India, and they've agreed to work with lodges that are have certain standards um, with conservation. I'm going to be sending y'all after this a India's top wildlife reserves, reserves, when's the best time to go, and then another one, what animals are best found where, so you have it. And this, for instance, shows you Bangdavar, you know, it's a um, Kana, Pana, Pench, and it, it'll go through all of the reserves and parks and the parks in India, just to give you an idea, of, so you have a cheat sheet in your office. And that is really it, other than what I'm going to, here's my conf information, and now I'm going to then take you to a friend of mine's Facebook page who's traveling with me. He's got five groups in India with us right now. So you can see what he is, uh, some of the things that he's posted. And let me just pull this over. There we go. Lee, can you all see this now? Yes, Jane, if I okay. can. Looks good. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Tara Incognita Eco Tours does five groups with me. Uh, has five groups with me right now. Um, we're in the middle of the second group is is going right now. And I just want to show you what they have. Some of the things they've seen. Um, you know, our second group in India. They you'll see it says um, started with the tiger sighting. This is the group in the in the vehicle. And here's a picture of one of the tigers that they saw. This is where I love Facebook. You can see it. It's almost like seeing it live. And this is some of the clients that are going Delhi by 
bicycle, and then let me show you a couple of other photos. Sorry, whoop. And here we, he had some other ones that they seem to have disappeared on me. Here we go. They had a tiger, uh, they, had, they saw 12 tigers, including a tiger stalking and killing a baby spotted deer in, uh, in Bendigar National Park. And again, it's hot, but just know that it's an option, that it's an option for you. I thought that would be fun to see some of those. And then I'm just going to just show you on our website some of our itineraries that we offer. We've got Tigers Grand Palaces with Taj Hotels. Royal Bengal Tiger Safari. Know that on the website we've got lots of options for you, lots of tours, um, hidden jewels of Rajasthan. Notice we've got a tent, tented camp that we've put up on top of the fort there. Tigers of Central India and the Himalaya foothills, etc. So that is what we do. Does that lead? Do I have any questions or anything from anybody? We do. We do have some questions, Jane. There was also a, a request to uh, go back to your contact info. So okay, I will go back um, to if I can figure out. I'm trying to now. Having a yeah, no problem. problem. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there was a question from Mira. What's the best time for safaris in India? For wildlife, it is going to be. Let me just switch displays. Uh, for wildlife, it is going to be um, February through May. Now. You know, April, May tend you know get very hot. Um, I'm from South Carolina in Georgia. I will tell you, I didn't think it was any hotter than anything I deal with here in the summer. Um, people from some different areas might have more of an issue, but no, they do have places with air conditioning that you can stay in the for you know for comfort in the evenings. Okay, terrific. And um, Let's see, this is about a photographer's pass. Do you know what the cost of details would be to get a photographer's pass? Um, if a group wanted to get a photographer's pass, is that possible? You know what, I have to check and see. I'm going to have to, I am, um, I'm going to have to check with our staff on that because last time I checked, I know it was like, I, you know, I'm afraid to throw out a number. Last time I want to say it was like a thousand, but let me, uh, if it's, I will answer that separately. Okay, no problem. They also, um, just so you know, they have some of these huge tripods that you can actually use from the back of an elephant. Wow. Where, so they have it so it gets, will touch the ground so you can be more even, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's cool. Um, what about departure dates for 2013 and 2014? Are those already set? Those are not set yet. Should have those any time. Okay, very good. And uh, what about, um, an, is, is there an agent section of the Royal Expedition site, or where would agents go if they needed to get some, some support? Um, come to me, and we do have an agent site, but come to me and I will get you anything you need. Um, I will get you photos, I'll get you itineraries, um, I've got some videos that we can, um, some short videos and things that I can help you with too. Okay. And uh, is Royal expeditions part of any consortia? We are not. We are a small boutique operator. The majority of my business comes from some high-end uh, travel agencies and mostly tour operators. Uh, Terra Incognita Eco Tours, um, Premier Tours out of Philadelphia, um, Safari Experts, um, Tim LePage out of uh, Park City, um, Yom Poo out of Stowe, Vermont. I mean, those, and I, there, I'm missing some, so my apologies. But those are our biggest operators. And Jed Taddock, who is a former Lindblad guide, and uh, uh, Lee knows him from way back. He, uh, he right now has these five groups going with us that are escorted, and he will also, um, he pays great, he pays agent commissions, and um, as does everybody that I work with. Uh, but he's doing planning another whole series next year because this one has been so successful. And then we offer our own scheduled trips, for instance, to go see the Pushkar Fair. Um, if you have real horseback people, uh, and they have to be real horsemen um, or women, uh, to go on horseback, a seven-day horseback riding safari. Okay. We offer. All right. That sounds fantastic, by the way. Not to me. I don't <laughs> like horses. <laughs> um, what's the average group size, Jane, for individual travelers to be scheduled um, to, let's see, 
average group size for individual travelers adding to a scheduled tour? On a scheduled tour, about the largest we have is about 16. We can do larger for, you know, for private groups. Uh, for instance, on Jed's trip right now, he's doing private planes, and the maximum they can have is eight passengers. So um, his is eight. Okay. Okay. That's really good to know. That's a small group. That's really terrific. That's terrific. a small group. Um, but again, mm -hmm. but most of the time it's going to be more 10 to, to 16. Now, one thing we do do, if you promote a group with us, do a group with us, we will promote your group online and um, allow others to sell into it. Okay, got it. Okay, um, let's see, commission. Is it commission or net rate? We give net rate. Okay. You know how hard you've earned this and how much. <laughs> so um, we allow you to make the decision. And then I actually pay commissions out of my, um, out of, here out of the states. Okay, all right, good. But you can pay by credit card over there, but I pay the commissions here. Mm-hmm, okay. And um, let's see, kids, do you see, is this a trip that would be suitable for kids? And if so, is there a different price for them? Uh, for, for kids, we would need to do it on an individual basis. Fabulous for kids. But I, I always, depending on the age, you know, if they're 12 and under, you really are going to want your own private trip. Everything I can do, we, we do on a private basis, which is most of our business. So, but yeah, definitely kids can, kids can do this. And of all ages, if you have your own private vehicle. Okay. I don't Good. recommend putting children in tents. Mm. So we'd want accommodations that, 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 that aren't tented, just mm -hmm. for safety reasons and noise reasons. Okay. And uh, just a, a recap, are these itineraries all inclusive? Nor, it depends on the itinerary. When you're, tr when you're out of the cities, yes. Normally in the cities, people are going to want to make their own dining choices or we'll make them for you. Um, so we can, when we, when we work with you, we can either arrange everything in advance in the cities or we can um, or make reservations for you where you, want, where you might want to eat. Okay, very so. good. Everything we do is tailored, so it's, you know, it's, it's how much you want us to be involved. Mm -hmm. We can, you know, and we can have a gu offer guides throughout, the same guide throughout a trip, which often I've got a few people who want to do that on their own or groups that want that, um, or we can have locally hosted. Okay. Um, getting back to the payment, do you know if, uh, if uh, agents pay by credit card or clients pay by credit card in India, is there a currency conversion fee? There almost always is, and that's normally your credit card, mm -hmm. whatever your credit card does okay. or their credit card does. Right. I find that's ev almost everywhere I book, I, I sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true, and I, I think there is a little bit for international. There's a little bit, little bit more of a charge. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, branching out with Royal Expeditions beyond uh, the wildlife safaris, do they offer any ocean adventures, sailing, scuba diving, surfing, et cetera? Um, uh, yeah, we do beaches. I know that. Um, we do Kerala. I'm just thinking, I'm sure we can make those arrangements. That's the first time I've been asked that for the um, – Diving, we can make some arrangements with some local operators, and, and the same with sailing, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Basically, okay. I've never, there's, the only thing I've never been able to do is when people wanted a low-end trip. Okay. Anything else, I, norm, I normally have been able to arrange it, um, in, including, um, you know, Sean Drace's husband lives near the uh, Dalai Lama, is their next door neighbor, is right up there. And so I have been known to be able, we, we've, if he's available and everything else, we've, we've even set up, you know, meetings with the Dalai Lama. Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh, India, everything is about influence and in who you know, good or mm -hmm. bad. It, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just how it is. And uh, that's really what we have um, is influence there and, 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 and who we know. Um, in addition to Sean Drace, you know, being a member of Parliament, which is huge. For instance, at the, uh, I've been able to do a, like a private party at the presidential palace in the gardens, you know, you know tours of the gardens, things like that. Um, but we, uh, one of the key things is we will always try also to make sure that 
people will meet, you know, like friends of Vishal um, who maybe own a palace hotel, they will, they'll make sure that they meet the clients and, you know, have, have cocktails if not dinner with them. And we, it, it's really the hospitality in, in meeting local. And it's part of the, it's an ingrained part of the Indian culture to begin with. But even if it's just stopping along the way and having a picnic lunch with locals, you know, we, we do try to do that. Yeah, it sounds really, really wonderful. Um, let's see, we've got some, so many good, uh, good questions here. Um, in terms of managing expectations of price, what's the price point of an average baseline trip? You know, I mean, I know a lot of these are, are customized, but um, there's a question here. Could we estimate a client jumping off point at about 5000 Oh, yes, definitely. Um, anywhere from about, depending on where you want to stay. Okay, I mean, I, the Taj Hotels, the Oberoi's, the Amman properties, yes, we work with them. We do a lot of business with them. There are also fabulous little privately owned heritage properties um, that may be, you know, $150 a night, um, 200 So we, I'd say anywhere three, I think you're safe anywhere 350 plus just depending on their budget. Uh, if they want to fly, of course, places versus drive, it's going to make a difference. Right. OK. Now, what about safety, especially in the major cities? Is there anything to be concerned about? Just the same things that you do everywhere. Um, you know, you be smart. Don't, 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 you know, we're not going to recommend you go into the slums without a, without a guide with you who knows what they're doing. Um, so I would say nothing, I, you know, I, I, everything I sell is so far away, <laughs> is, is long haul, um, that I, you know, I would say just the, the usual safety precautions that you need to take anywhere. Yeah, okay, okay, very good. Um, okay, um, let's see, question here from, from Heather. Um, the search for the snow leopard. Um, she wanted to get some more information on that Himalayas trip. Can she get brochures through you? Uh, yeah, I don't. That, I don't actually have that in a brochure, but I do have PDFs that I can send you on that. Definitely, yeah. Just put it in the questions, and we'll send all of that to you. Okay. And um, gosh, let's see other questions here. You know, there's just a lot of questions about price, and you know, so I think the main thing is going to be just to contact you, right? Because we yeah. could be here a, a long time just working through different scenarios. Yeah, because the problem is, is, you know, you've got properties that are that are $100 a night, and we've got them all the way up to $1,500 a night per person. Okay. So there's there's w really a wide, wide range. Mm -hmm. And because we yeah. do customize, you know, we, we can do that. But I, I will, again, the only thing I really won't do is real budget. Um, right. Won't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about uh, biking through the Himalayas? Is that uh, something that Royal Expeditions has ever offered? We have actually put together some nice biking itineraries, yes. So um, we can work with you on that. OK. Virginia had a question. She just wanted you to recap the big seven again, Jane. Sure. You know what? Let she me miss one of them. <laughs> did I miss one? No, she did. She oh, OK. She was writing down. Yeah. If I can, um, let me just go back because I'm not, frankly, guys, I'm not going to remember top of my head. Oh, sorry. I just somehow got out of here. Hang on. Let me um, go back there. And I'm looking, Sam McClure I saw is on here and she's running through the big seven I know in her head already. Um, <laughs> okay. Switch displays. There we go. Um, big seven. Let's see. We have the big five, which are Africa's big five, the leopard, Asian, and then we have elephants, rhino, and again, they're in eastern India. The lions are in western India. Lions, and then, did I miss one? Did I, did I leave one out? Let's see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I had the first one I didn't do. It was the... Um, the uh, buffalo. That's what I left the, the, to the buffalo. Leopard, elephants, rhino, and lion, and then the snow leopard and the tiger. Excellent. Excellent. 
Okay. Well, uh, let's see. There's a question here. This is always a popular one about uh, whether Royal Expeditions ever offers any FAMs or agent rates. Yes. Um, I haven't done a, a group FAM in a while, and it's. Um, I actually just sent a, a request to a hotelier today saying I need to do one. Um, but I can definitely um, help you there. Yeah, we, we, we do give agent rates. Good. Good, and so again, it's just a matter of contacting you. So, all right, well, you know, I think uh, we have answered uh, the bulk of the questions. A lot of the other questions in the queue here are probably best for you to just uh, go for one-on-one. -on -one. So I will turn it over to you, Jane, for anything else you'd like to share before we close today. But um, my job here, yeah, yes, thank you all for putting up with me. I am by no means a real expert on India. That's my staff there who, who do this, the staff there who do this every single day. Uh, if I can't answer something, I'll get the answer from them. But I would love to work with you guys. This is, you know, I've been in this business, the travel business, what, 20, 22 years, 23 years. Um, just World Expeditions, I have to say, is just one of the finest little companies I've ever worked with. Uh, their attention to detail is amazing, um, i.e., on arrival. When they noticed that I brought the wrong currency charger, so on every trip anybody goes on now, they always make sure they have a variety for people. You know, they they have the correct ones in, in case people need them. Giving books on arrival, local Indian books that they can read while they're there, all in English, of course, and um, they will go out of their way to exceed your expectations. Um, Eighty-seven percent of our business is return is, is uh, repeat clientele and uh, return. So uh, that says a lot in referrals. So thank you all. Well, thank you, Jane. That was great. So with that, I think we will say good day and conclude our presentation. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks so much.